So it's been a while since we did a video with the 98 PC, but today it's finally time to bring it back from the over a month long hiatus. And we're gonna be doing that with GeoWorks. This is an operating environment that was released back in 1990, around the same time as Windows 3.0. A time when Windows wasn't as popular as it would be in later years. DOS was the dominant operating system in use, but these operating environments provided a graphical user interface that ran on top of DOS and made your computer easier to use, especially for those who knew nothing about DOS commands. GeoWorks traces its roots back to the 8-bit GEOS operating system from 1986, available for the Commodore 64. The 16-bit version, which is what we're taking a look at today, is known by a couple of names, PC GEOS, GeoWorks Ensemble, or simply GeoWorks. So let's take a look at it. All right, so here we are on the 98 PC. It's got a fresh install of Microsoft DOS, and we're gonna jump right into installing GeoWorks on it. Now, unfortunately, even though I have a physical copy of GeoWorks 1.02 on these floppy diskettes right here, we're not gonna be able to install it on this computer. Now, why is that, you might ask? Well, disk number one out of this set is unfortunately corrupted. So, we're, so the computer's not able to read the data off of it. Now, I did try to make some additional copies off of some images that I found, and those weren't able to install properly on this computer either. So we're going to instead install GeoWorks version 2.0. I do wanna talk a little bit about 1.0 before we install this because there is some interesting stuff and there's also some things that were in 1.0 that I don't believe are in 2.0. So there were three different editions of GeoWorks. You had GeoWorks Ensemble, Ensemble Lite, and Pro. So these diskettes right here are, these are an OEM uh, set of diskettes, which yes, there were OEM copies of this that were pre-installed on certain computers, and we'll get into that in a moment as well. So Ensemble is the standard edition, kind of the baseline version. You had Ensemble Lite, which was just like Ensemble, but it got rid of a couple of applications. It got rid of uh, GeoDraw, which is a part of the uh, Geo suite of productivity applications, which we'll take a look at you know, in a moment as well, because that's still in 2.0. And it also got rid of the AOL client, because yes, version 1.0 did come included with an AOL client, which is pretty awesome. I don't believe 2.0 did, but we're, we're gonna you know, see that once we install it. And the last version is the pro version, that's kind of the, the top tier version. And that includes everything that Ensemble includes, but it also includes Quattro Pro in addition to that, and that is a spreadsheet program. So version 2.0 here came out in 1993, so three years after 1.0, and three years after Windows 3.0 came out. At this time, I mean, this was 1993, Windows 95 was on the horizon, it was only a couple years away, and Windows was about to gain, because remember, when Windows 3.0 came out, Microsoft did not, I mean, they they did with DOS, they held a, a pretty substantial majority of the desktop computer space with MS-DOS, but Windows was still in its infancy. Windows 1 and 2.0 had already been out, but in terms of user adoption, it did not really draw as many people, especially when you compare it to you know Windows 3.1 and Windows 95. But after Windows 3.1 came out and eventually Windows 95, Microsoft started to gain a, a major foothold in the operating system space, the desktop computer operating system space that they still hold today. So let's take a look at what GeoWorks looked like in 1993. So I've got disk number one here. This came on uh, five three and a half inch high density floppy diskettes. So we've got disk number one in, we're going to go to the A drive here. Now this, because this is an operating environment similar to Windows 3.0 and 3.1, it requires DOS to be installed because it's not an, an operating system in and of itself. It runs on top of DOS. So if we view a directory listing of drive A here, there should be, I believe it's called install.exe. So there it is, install, we're gonna run that. So it says, congratulations on purchasing Ensemble 2.0 because kind of the the names GeoWorks, Ensemble, and Geos are kind of used interchangeably. They all refer to the same operating environment. So it the reason why it says upgrade is because there is a partial installation of 1.0 on this or 1.03 that I was trying to get to work properly. So we're just going to go with a new install. 
uh, we're in the US and it asks you where you want to install. It's gonna be Geos 20. And there we go, we've just finished the installation. So we're gonna press enter on finish and it's examined our config.sys file and it says that the setting for files and or buffers is not adequate. Do you want these changes made? We'll say yes. Modify the following files, save the backup copy. Okay, press A to continue. So this is where you can have it modify the autoexec.bat file so that you can type the command, which in this case is geos20 at any DOS prompt. So you don't have to be in the folder with all of the GeoWorks files. And Windows did this as well. You could modify the autoexec.bat file to be able to type win, the win command from any location to still launch into Windows. So we're gonna say yes, because we definitely want to do this. So it modified autoexec.bat and it saved a backup copy for us. So we'll press A to continue. And we'll press yes to view the readme. So here's the readme right here, GeoWorks Ensemble version 2.0 installation help. So you can press, and you see up there, you can press page up and page down. So if we press page down, it's gonna uh, go through the document there. So this would be very useful to read, you know, if you were planning on using this as your primary operating environment at that time, we're gonna press escape to get out of it. And it says, would you like to run it now? We'll say, yeah, of course we do. So here it is, GeoWorks Ensemble is now loaded onto your hard disk. In the next few screens, you will verify that the video system is okay and get your mouse and printer to work. Now we don't have a printer, but so it says setup is chosen VGA 640 by 480 16 color as your display device. So we're just gonna go with the default option that it selected for us. So that's VGA 640 by 480 16 color. We're gonna press enter. So here it says in each corner of the screen, you should see a small arrow and this text should seem sharp and clear. So we'll press enter because it is. So now it's gonna show, so this is basically like a video setup tool to allow you to configure your display properly to make sure everything's displaying correctly. It's saying that, the, you know, the text should display clear. You should be able to see colors here. You should be able to see the arrows. So it's kind of showing you all this so that if anything is wrong, you can configure it uh, with those menu options that we were just, uh, just looking at. So we're gonna press enter to continue. Now it says, what kind of mouse do you have? Now we have a PS2 mouse. So there we go, IBM PS2 mouse. We're just gonna choose that. So now it has you uh, test your mouse. So you like move the mouse around. So it is working. You can click this button to test it and the computer, uh, the PC speaker plays a little sound there. So we're gonna press enter to continue. Now we don't have a printer connected, so we're gonna say none. So it says up at the top, congratulations, you've successfully installed GeoWorks Ensemble. If one of the installation disks is still in the drive, you may remove it now and place it with the other installation disk in a safe place. Then it has a system error code there, KR-01. Now it's not set up to start automatically for us. We could add that to autoexec.bat ourselves if we wanted to. But since it did modify it for us, we can type in Geos20 even on the root of the C drive and press enter and it will launch into GeoWorks. And now apparently it's going to go through the setup again. Okay, so we've opened up MS-DOS edit. We've opened uh, geos.ini. This is the uh, system configuration file for GeoWorks. Now, I did read online that because we are running this, I mean, this, this computer that we're running on uh, came out in the year 2000, so it's much newer than the operating environment itself. So we're going to have to change this continue setup flag. I believe we have to change it to false and uh, save the file. I believe that will uh, will solve that for us. So we've saved it. We're going to launch Geos 20. And we're going to start normally. And there we go. So here it is, guys. This is what GeoWorks 2.0 looks like. What we're looking at right now is the Geo Manager. This is the central location for launching your applications and viewing documents and all of that good stuff. This is where that you do it. It's basically like the GeoWorks alternative to the Windows Program Manager that would be in uh, Windows 3.1. So if you used Windows 3.1 before, I mean, you could very easily go between GeoWorks and Windows. Like if you went from maybe Windows 2.0 and you got GeoWorks, or maybe you went from GeoWorks to Windows 3.1, you could very easily adapt because they are somewhat similar in a lot of ways. I mean, they've got a very similar concepts with having a, a central interface to launch applications from, but GeoWorks takes it a step further by adding this little uh, bar across the bottom. It's called the toolbar, and this allows you to easily switch between certain windows and, and, and view different items across your system. What's also cool is this button on the left here, that is it looks like a trash can, doesn't it? It's called the wastebasket. 
and this is this functions exactly like the recycle bin in Windows does and the uh, trash can in Mac OS. It's an area where you can drag files and documents to that you don't need anymore. They'll be stored in this location until you empty it. And keep in mind, Windows didn't get a recycle bin until Windows 95. Windows 3.0 and 3.1 didn't have this. So this, you know, GeoWorks, I mean, this version here came out in 1993 and it had a uh, recycle bin, which is pretty cool. Now, these two buttons here are uh, going to allow you to change how you're viewing Windows currently. So what we're in right now is the full screen mode, essentially, where you've got the wastebasket window is full screen. What I can also do is click on this button next to it, which brings them into a stack. And this is where you can drag this window around. You can have multiple windows open at the same time. I can take the uh, the geo, I mean, this is gonna be your, again, your main folder with all of your applications. I can move this around, say I want this on this side and I want the recycle bin, or I'm, I'm gonna probably call this the recycle bin a couple of times, the waste basket on the right side or maybe something else that I'm working on. Uh, that's what this interface is for. Now, if you open up, like, let's say you had, you know, this, this window full screen and you want to get back to the main interface with all your programs, that's what this world button is for right here. You can click on this. And this is the world folder, as you can see up here, is, is uh, what its actual name is. And this is your, your central location within the Geo Manager for launching your other applications. Now, it's got this, uh, this bar across the top, which gives you the location of what you're looking at on the hard drive. So this is stored in the C drive, in the Geos 20 folder, and in the world folder. That's where all these items are. There's 16 items in here. This is uh, how many bytes they take up on the system. And this is how many bytes that you have free on your hard disk. And you can see that we have a lot because this hard drive is is pretty large, especially for the time. Uh, so yeah, this is the, the central interface for, for, for launching all of your applications. Now what you've got here next to the world icon, you've got this. This is your uh, document folder. So this is going to be the default save location for document storage that, you know, when you create documents with the uh, GeoWorks suite of applications, which we'll get into in a moment. Next to that is called DOS Room, and this is essentially the same concept. This is the storage location for DOS programs. So you could have DOS programs stored here, make shortcuts, launchers, and store them here and get very, very easy access to them. And the three buttons to the right are pretty self-explanatory. They uh, allow you to view what's on the A, B, and C drive. So I don't have anything in my floppy drive right now, but I can click on the C drive here, and here are my contents of the C drive. Uh, so yeah, pretty awesome. So back to the world folder here. So one of the things that sets GeoWorks apart from Windows is that it comes included with a suite of productivity programs, very similar to Microsoft Office, but it's it's totally free and it's included for you. Now Windows at this time had WordPad or Bright, and that's about it in addition to Notepad, obviously, but that was, all, all it came with was a text editor. And if you wanted to get a spreadsheet program or a you know drawing program or, or something like that, you'd have to go out and buy that software separately. But GeoWorks already comes with a suite of applications right here, and they're all with this Geo prefix. So you've got Geo Banner, Geo Calc, Geo Com, Geo Dex, Geo Draw, Geo File, Geo Planner, and Geo Write. So say I want to open up Geo Write here. This is going to be like Microsoft Word, essentially. Uh, it's going to be like if we want to use Microsoft programs to compare these two. So this is going to be your Microsoft Word equivalent. What's also cool though is you have templates. So you can create a new blank document just like you can in Word, but you've also got pre-designed templates that they've made for you. So I can scroll through here and say I wanna create a memo. I can click on this, hit use template. So here's a memo template. So I can, here's the name of the memo. I can put the date to, from, regarding, and CC here. You know, people who wanna receive a carbon copy. And I can type the contents of the memo there. And, and when I save this, like let's say we wanna, name this, you know, my awesome memo. I can save this by going over to the file menu. I can click on save as, and its default save location is that document folder. So you can save it wherever you want, but let's say I want to save it as memo. We'll uh, click on save. And now if we get out of this, we can go into that folder and, uh, and view them. Now you can still drag this window around. Like I can still get to the geo manager behind here if I want to. So we can you know, minimize this. That's what that little button will do. It'll minimize it. And very similar, like in Windows, uh, 
one and two and, and three. When you minimize something, it kind of shows as an icon on the desktop. So it's got that, that same concept here. And I can now go to my document folder. And here is that file right here. So it's so it's in here. And this was a, a, a schedule document that I created when I was messing around with it off camera. Now the window controls themselves are, are very self-explanatory and very similar to use. You've got this is your maximize button. This is your minimize button. This is your help button here. So this is, you know, from whatever application that you're in, you can open up the help documentation very, very easily. You can even open up help for the help documentation. And, you know, you can get information about the program. And there's there's a lot of, like, very useful info in here. And they've really made it, like, if I go into getting started with the GeoWrite, I can click on what is GeoWrite and what can I do with it. And it tells you exactly what it is. And it makes comparisons to things like a typewriter. So it's really designed to for people who, who know nothing about computers or computer terms. It really makes it easy to, uh, to, you know, get them to understand all of this stuff. They even, like, if I go back into, uh, like, let's, let's close out of this, I can go into the help documentation for GeoManager. Uh, if I go into getting started with GeoManager, what are all these things on my screen? I can scroll down here, and when it's talking about the wastebasket, it even uses like physical terms. So like it's, it says, you can click on the wastebasket to see what's in it, rather like turning it upside down. So if, there's, if it was a physical wastebasket, it's telling you, oh, this is just like taking the wastebasket and flipping it over and you can see what's inside. So they use analogies that are really easy for someone who doesn't know what all this stuff is to, uh, to understand. Now you probably noticed the way that I was closing windows. I can double click on this little menu up here. I can close it. Very similar to how Windows works, right? But what GeoWorks also has is this little express button up here and like let's say I open up GeoCalc here so this is your uh, spreadsheet program so we'll open up like an invoice here so I've got this full screen say I want to get easy access to another application all I have to do is instead of moving this out of the way or closing out of it entirely or even minimizing it I can click on this little menu up here go to start an application and get a list of all the other applications on my system so say I want to launch Tetris because yeah this has Tetris included as well pretty awesome uh, so I can start playing a game of Tetris. We can go to game here, start new game, and here we go. I can play Tetris. And of course, you can close it by double-clicking on this button up here or by just clicking on it once and going down to close or by just pressing and holding and, and going down to close. However you do it, uh, you can do it there. So that's what, that's what this little menu does. Now, you may have noticed this little uh, thumbtack icon here, and this is the case for every single one of these menu items. And this is another thing that Windows doesn't have. You actually have the ability to uh, pin these menu items to your screen. So this could be very useful for, say, you weren't really a user of keyboard shortcuts, but you were always copying and pasting things in the spreadsheet application or in the, the word processing program. Instead of having to constantly go up to edit and click on copy, edit, and paste, you can click on edit, click on this thumbtack icon, and now the contents of the edit menu have been moved into a window that you can drag around and, and have on your screen. So it does, like, you can't really resize this because it is, like, there, there's no option. If you go down here, like, to resize it, there, there's no real option for that. But if you wanted to have this edit menu down here at the bottom of, of your screen or, or whatever, you can do it. And yeah, this is something that Windows doesn't have. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, to uh, you know, to like see it working here in uh, GeoWorks. So yeah, and everything does work. Like, if I want to click Select All, I can select everything. The menu's not going to go away since it's behaving as a window. To get rid of it, you have to close it, just like any other window. So pretty awesome. Again, something that Windows does not have. GeoWorks One also came with an AOL client, which is pretty cool. It was already pre-installed on your computer and you could use it right out of the box. And this was actually the result of a partnership between AOL and GeoWorks. So not only did GeoWorks get to bundle an AOL client with their operating environment, but AOL utilized the GeoWorks graphical user interface on their DOS version of the program. So this is a Windows AOL floppy diskette here. Now, you, you've probably seen these before if you were around when AOL was really really big you probably had a couple of these right so this is a windows copy of america online but they also had a dos version that was that they developed and and, and maintained 
uh, before Windows really started to take off, and then at that point they, they kind of stopped, you know, focusing on the DOS version. Uh, as it was eventually discontinued, but on those diskettes when you would boot off of them, they, they contained a graphical user interface, and that was GeoWorks. So if you ever use those America Online diskettes, this probably looks familiar to you because it's literally the same interface. I mean, it was based off of uh, GeoWorks. In fact, there is a fully functional but very, very slim down copy of GeoWorks on those DOS AOL diskettes that if you know what you're doing, you can boot off of it and actually boot into GeoWorks. Again, it's like a very slimmed down version. I've never done it myself, but that's what I've read online. You can actually, uh, you know, boot off of it and kind of, kind of similar to the mini Windows 3.1 floppy that we took a look at. Of course, that was a third party thing. But uh, yeah, and actually utilize uh, GeoWorks right off of a bootable floppy disk, which is pretty cool. So that's a unique partnership between uh, these two companies, GeoWorks and AOL, that kind of uh, got, you know, GeoWorks to get outside the realm of just being sold in stores and sold as an operating environment, but actually used in a specialized sense for a specific purpose. And GeoWorks was even pre-installed on certain computers. They had partnerships with OEMs, with certain OEMs. So you could, if you bought one of these computers, it would come pre-installed with GeoWorks. This is what you would see when you would turn it on for the first time but it never gained the massive market share that Windows did because Windows, I mean, with the rise of Windows 3X and, you know, eventually Windows 95, uh, GeoWorks, the company, eventually stopped supporting the desktop version of it. Now, the former CEO of GeoWorks claimed that, that Microsoft actually went to some of these OEMs and threatened to withhold MS-DOS licenses from them if they continued to pre-install GeoWorks on, you know, on their computers. And they eventually signed them to two-year exclusive deals to pre-install Windows instead. So that kind of got rid of GeoWorks' um, OEM market, you know, where it was pre-installed on certain computers. And if this is true, it's really not that surprising because Microsoft had such a large influence at that time. And even though this was extremely unethical, uh, controversial, and monopolistic, practices like this did lead to the Department of Justice investigation in the late 90s and early 2000s that I talk a little bit more about in my Netscape retrospective video. Now, GeoWorks later evolved into another operating system called Breadbox Ensemble which we may take a look at in a future video. And if you guys want to see a video on that, be sure to let me know. But it kind of has a Windows 95-ish interface to it. But yeah, guys, that is a look back at GeoWorks. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this one. I think it's just really fun to look back at these older operating systems or operating environments, technically. And it kind of just makes you think, like, what if GeoWorks became the operating environment and eventually the operating system that everyone used and what if it gained a major market share instead of Windows. I mean, and you could say the same thing about OS2 or about uh, Digital Research Gem. I mean, there were all these operating systems that were really competing, well, operating systems and operating environments that were competing to uh, be the operating system that everyone used and obviously that victory went to Windows. Definitely had a lot to do with Microsoft's influence and business practices, but Windows became the operating system that everyone uses and, and still holds a major majority on uh, desktop and laptop computers today. But it's just kind of fun to look back in the past and think about, you know, what if, like again, what if GeoWorks became uh, the operating system that, that everyone used. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do every single week, multiple times per week on this channel. And if you guys have any comments, questions, video suggestions for me, be sure to leave those down below. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.